Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the liquidating distribution of a partnership. In a prior session, we looked at non-liquidating distribution and the difference between the two is in the liquidating distribution, the partnership simply put it's closing, we're closing the business, we're closing all the accounts and that matters. That That's relevant to understand what's liquidating because we have to deal with basis and when we're liquidating, we have to get rid of the basis we are gone the basis should go down to zero so the nature of the liquidating distribution can take place as a singular event simply put you can you know close the business in one event or may occur in a series of events they could close the business in, in various steps the end of the day the partners is exiting the partnership simply put the partner is gone the business is closed and the partner's full exit from the partnership is the end product so when the partnership liquidate proportionally, and remember we have proportional and disproportional. Proportional means you're going to get exactly the value of your percentage ownership. Under those circumstances, no gain and no loss is recognized by the partnership. And we will work a liquidating proportional distribution. It will be helpful if you understand or if you reviewed before we go through this session, the rules for non-liquidating distribution that's proportional because it's similar in a way but not the same so let's go ahead and get started before we proceed any further i have a public announcement about my company farhatlectures.com farhat accounting lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your cpa exam preparation as well as your accounting courses my cpa material is aligned with your cpa review course such as becker roger wiley gleam miles my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics my resources consist of lectures multiple choice questions true false questions as well as exercises go ahead start your free trial today as i mentioned ordering rules and liquidation are similar to the non-liquidating or the current or the current distribution the rules for assigning liquidating distribution are similar similar means not the same similar but it's very important or very helpful if you remember your current non-liquidating distribution assuming we have a gain scenario and we will discuss what a gain scenario in a moment gain means i'm specifically saying no loss because under a loss we're going to have different scenarios the ordering rules are the follow first we distribute the cash then we distribute the hot asset unrealizable receivable and inventory then the third step it's going to be a little bit different any remaining outside basis gets allocated to the other assets received because what we have to do is we have to zero the basis why because we are dealing with the liquidation so we're going to see what that means but this is the step where the where they differentiate this allocation of partnership interest does not apply when the partner is required to recognize a loss and we're going to look at a loss situation because the rules might be a little bit different let's take a look at a normal distribution with the gain uh, first we distribute the cash cash is the first asset to be distributed during liquidation if the cash distributed is greater than the basis then we have a gain and we already know this from the current distribution or non-liquidating distribution now the distribution of cash which include deemed cash like what relief from the partner share of partnership debt if they relieve you from that it's the same thing as they gave you cash that reduces the liquidated partners outside basis dollar for dollar remember basis cannot be cannot be below zero we could go down to zero then the next thing if you have anything left any basis left and we have inventory we're going to distribute the unrealized receivable and inventory so following the cash unrealized receivable and inventory are next to be distributed now these asset received a basis equivalent to the lesser of these two values so what what amount do we assign to that ar unrealized ar or receivable the basis is the the the, the lower of the partners inside basis and in those assets the partnership not the partner the partnership inside basis or the remaining outside basis of the partner because once you get to the eliminate the outside basis of the partner you can't go below zero so the lower of these two will be used so the partner's outside basis is reduced by the amount of basis allocated to this ordinary income producing asset remember we 
our goal is to bring your bases down to zero, outside bases down to zero. The third step, remember the third step is they is where they differentiate they, they differentiate between liquidating and non-liquidating. The difference between liquidating and non-liquidating becomes apparent at this step. If the liquidating partner has any remaining outside basis, whatever that outside basis is, it's allocated to all assets received in this step during the liquidating distribution. Why? Again, we want the outside basis at this step to go down to zero. Now, the best way to illustrate this is to look at an example. So let's assume John has, uh, has a basis of 80,000. John received $20,000 in cash. So they started with $80,000 in basis. First step, we're gonna allocate the cash and cash the basis and the fair market value is the same. Basis after the cash is 60,000. Then a proportionate share of inventory, remember this is a proportionate distribution, with a basis of 25, fair value of 35, we eliminate the fair value. We're going to take out 25,000 for the inventory. Therefore, what's left is 35,000. Then they get a building with a basis of 10,000, fair value of 15. Well, hold on a second. We're giving them, they still have 35,000. We're giving them an asset with a fair value of 15 and a and a basis of partnership of 10. First of all, we don't use the fair value, but even if we give them a $10,000, even if we give them the $10,000 basis, follow the rules, if we follow the rules as we learned, what's gonna happen? If we allocate 10,000, what's gonna be half, what's gonna happen is we're gonna have 25,000 remaining. We can't have $25,000 remaining. This is not a current or non-liquidating. This is a liquidating. What does that mean? It means the building will take a basis of what? Of 35,000 to bring down the basis to zero. So the distribution liquidate both the partnership and John and Pyre interests. We have no hot asset other than the inventory and it's a proportionate distribution. We recognize no gain and no loss. So first 80 minus 60 will give us, uh, 80 minus 20 will give us a remaining balance of 60. Then the 60 is reduced by 25 to 35 and the step three, the building absorbs John remaining partnership basis of 35,000 of 35,000. Why? Because we need to remove it. We need to remove the basis. The basis will need to go down to zero. That's the purpose of it. That's the logic. Because if we are liquidating, what would John do with the remaining basis if the business don't exist? We could also have what's called step down and stop step down and stop up basis when a multiple asset are distributed within the same class. Special rules may apply under those circumstances. Let's see how what are they. We could have step up, step up may be necessary, or step down might be necessary. What does that mean? The partner's remaining basis, whatever remaining basis we have for the partnership interest, is less than the partnership basis for the distributed asset in that class. So the partner's remaining basis, whatever that remaining basis are, let's assume it is remaining basis of 35,000, is less than the partner's basis for the distributed asset. So whatever we have left is maybe, uh, you know, 20,000. Uh, I'm sorry, it's less. It, let's assume 40,000. Okay. The partner's remaining basis for each distributed asset is proportionally reduced. What's going to happen is, remember, the asset inside the partnership, the partnership basis for the distributed asset is less than the partner's basis. What's going to happen is, let's assume this is John. This is John basis. Okay. And this is the partnership basis in the distributed asset. Well, John basis are lower. What we have to do is we have to reduce it proportionally. The reduction is done to minimize the difference between each asset basis and its fair market value. And we're going to look at an example to illustrate this concept. This is a step down. We could also have a step up. We're going to look at an example with a step up, but the same concept will apply. Here's the partner's remaining basis for the partnership is greater. So if we have 30, if John has, let's keep it at 35,000, it's greater than the partnership basis for the distributed asset and the other asset class. Other asset means not cash and not what? And not hot asset. 
not inventory or receivable. A different rule would apply. The partner's basis for the asset in Z class is determined in a way that ensures the basis amount are proportionate to the, the fair market value. So we're going to use the proportionate fair market value of the distributed asset in that class. Well, uh, hold on a second. Could you give me an example? Yes, let's take a look at an example. Let's go back to the John's example. Same example as John, except that John received two buildings at the end. Remember, John had... Let's go back to that example. So we're going to look at the same example where we have 80 minus 20 gave us 60,000. Then we reduced it by the inventory. We remain with 35. Except now, with the 35,000, we are giving John two buildings. One building with the basis of 4,000. The other building is basis of three. Now, the fair market value of these buildings are equal. So the fair value are the same, just for the sake of illustration. It doesn't matter. They can be 60, 40, 40, 30. Uh, you know, 30, 70, it doesn't matter. In this scenario, John recognizes no gain and no loss. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to take the 80 minus the 20. We're going to go down to 60. Then we're going to take the 60 minus the 25 brings us down to 35,000. What's going to happen is this. The 35,000 that's left, since we have two assets, we have 35,000 left and we have two assets. How are we going to allocate the two assets? Well, the basis is four and three. We're going to have a step up and use the fair market value and assign for each asset 17,500, 50% and 50% because the building has equal fair market value. So what we did here is we did a step up and the opposite would have been true if we had to do a step down. But this is basically how it works. Let's assume where we have a loss, recognizing loss and a liquidating distribution. So when do we have a loss? in a liquidating distribution. We can only recognize a loss if two conditions are met. Here we are working with a loss. It's different than a gain scenario. The partner receives only cash, unrealized receivable or inventory. So we're only receiving cash or hot asset. Now, it's critical to, to note the word only. Okay, a distribution of any other type of asset would remove the loss. Okay, so we are only receiving cash and hot asset and no other third type of assets. And the partner's outside basis is greater than the inside basis for the hot asset. So basically, we're getting less than what our basis are. Okay. So the basis of the hot asset cannot be increased. You cannot increase the value of the inventory. You cannot increase the value of the receivable. As a result, the assets in step two take the carryover basis and the partners can claim a loss for any remaining basis in the partnership interests. Let's look at an example. Sarah's outside basis is 50,000. She received a liquidating distribution of 10,000 in cash and a proportionate share of inventory having a partnership basis of 5,000, fair market value of 15, remove the fair market value. Now, we are not allowed to have a step up basis of the inventory. Okay, and you can obviously you cannot have a step up basis for the cash. If you say 10,000 cash, you cannot say, well, the fair value of the cash is worth more. You can't do that, right? So cash is cash. So Sarah is not allowed to step up the basis of the inventory neither. So 5,000 is allocated. So what's going to happen is this. Sarah started with 50, cash 5, inventory at cash 10, inventory 5. What's left is 35,000. Because she received a distribution only with cash and inventory. Now, the 35000 is what to her? The 35000 is a loss. Recognize a capital loss of 35000 on the liquidation. Okay. Now, let's assume, change the example a little bit, and assume Sarah receives a piece of furniture from that partnership with the adjusted basis of 1000 that was used that was used in the partnership. Ignoring any depreciation recapture, just say she received a piece of furniture. Well, guess what? Remember that 35000 that's a loss? Then the furniture will absorb the basis. Then we'd say the furniture will have a basis of 35000 and the capital loss is basically evaporated, gone. Evaporated, gone. What should you do now? You should go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional resources, lectures, multiple choice, true, false. That's going to help you understand these concepts. It's very important that you reinforce what you know through practice. Why? Because you want to test your knowledge. And Farhat Lectures will give you that option. Whether you are a CPA exam candidate, an accounting student, invest in yourself or an enrolled agent, invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.